What's going on guys, Mental Outlaw here, and today we're going to be installing Gentoo. I've been doing a lot of distro hopping lately, but I think Gentoo has brought an end to my distro hopping because it's, it's just such a good OS. I mean, it really can be anything that you want it to be. It's got a lot of speed, it's got a lot of abilities if you're willing to actually work with it. Because the only downside to Gentoo is that it's a little bit tricky, especially if you're a beginner to Linux. So I'm hoping that this video can make Gentoo quite a bit easier. So we're going to be installing it in a virtual machine today because I don't have a capture card. I can't really show you guys how to install it to hardware. I can't record my BIOS or anything like that. Um, but the steps in a virtual machine are pretty much the same for doing it on hardware. So create your virtual machine, give it a name, set the amount of RAM you want to use. I highly recommend to give Gentoo as much RAM as you can pretty much afford to give it. If you're following along in a virtual machine, you'll find out why in a little bit. Create a virtual hard disk now. We're going to do fixed size. We're going to make it 30 gigs in size so that we can actually install a little bit of software to it and have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, fix size so that the disk is faster. All right, and then we're going to add some other settings. So our processor, same with our RAM. We want to give it as much as we can. I'm going to give it three cores just so that nothing crashes. I have an older CPU, so if you have a newer one, definitely give it more. We're going to make our hard disk first. Um, that's just so that when we're done, we can actually reboot into it without having to change our configuration again. Give it 128 megs on video memory, enable 3D acceleration, and choose your ISO file. So I downloaded this earlier today from gentoo.org. So this is the minimal installation CD. You can see 12119. That's the same one that I have right here. Hit OK, and then let's get started. And this is probably going to launch it off screen. Yep, so let me go grab it, bring it back to this monitor. Okay, so when you first start Gentoo, you're greeted with this message, enter to boot, F1 for kernels, F2 for options. So. Uh, you don't really have to press F1. I just did that because it started off screen and I didn't want it to uh, you know, go past the 15 seconds. But these are the kernels that you can go into. So memtest, you can do that if you're installing to hardware and maybe you're not sure about your RAM, if it's shoddy or not. I'm in a virtual machine, I know my RAM is good. So I'm gonna type Gen2 so that I can actually boot into the kernel. And this is going to be using OpenRC. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I like Gentoo. Down here was the key map options. By default, it uses American English. So if you speak American English, you can just hit enter. Uh, if not, then choose whatever option it listed there for your language. But if uh, you can follow along in this video, you probably speak English good enough to actually use that as the language on your system. So it's gonna check this config file. That part does take a couple of minutes. You can fast forward a couple minutes in the video if you don't wanna wait for it. It'll do the same thing on your system too, so it's nothing to be alarmed about.
All right, so since this is about to come up, this is the Gen 2 AMD 64 handbook. Uh, you can find it here on the Gen 2 wiki. It's one of the first page things. This basically gives you written instructions for how to install Gen 2. Some of these parts I'm going to skip past because I just know from memory what to do. Um, other parts I'm going to read it along with you guys because I'm not that much of a nerd. I don't have the full process for installing Gen 2 memorized. So first step we want to do now that we're in it is make sure that our internet is working. So ping any website that you want that accepts ICMP. It's pinging gnu.org.fine. So I'm going to kill the ping command now and get started with formatting our disk. We do CF disk dev SDA. Actually, this isn't formatting. This is partitioning. Let me make sure that I have my terminology correct because the last thing I want to do is misinform you guys. So we're going to set 128 megs for our boot partition. And you just use arrow keys to move around in here and then enter to go on to the option you want. So we're doing dev SDA one as boot. We're going to, of course, make it bootable. And then for free space, we're just gonna use the rest of this primary. That's gonna be our root drive. Um, now here in Gen 2, this is the file, uh, I mean, excuse me, the uh, partitioning scheme that it tells you to use. You don't have to do this. Um, you don't have to you know, separate your root and home partitions. I don't prefer to do that. Uh, you really don't need to use swap. Uh, swap is really meant for computers that just don't have any RAM. And when I say computers don't have any RAM, I mean if you have like less than four gigs or if you have less than six gigs. In 2019, I would assume just about anything you're gonna be installing Gen 2 to is gonna have more than that. Um, unless you're doing a Raspberry Pi, but man, if you're doing a Raspberry Pi, just don't don't compile everything on that because it's going to take days to compile all your packages. Um, I'm in a virtual machine, six gigs of RAM, so no swap necessary. All right, we'll write our changes to the disk. We'll quit out of this, and then we'll start formatting it. So we're going to mkfs.ext4 dev SDA1, we're going to do the same thing on SDA2, and then we're going to mount our root partition, which is SDA2, to mount Gen2. I believe that's all the instructions on the first page of this. Let's see, blah, 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 swap partition, yeah, we don't need swap. Uh, yep, all right, there you go. So now installing our stage three. So the stage three is basically the, um, it's basically the, the rest of your operating system because this is just a minimal installation CD. All this has on it is a handful of utilities. One of those utilities is Lynx, which is a terminal based browser that we're gonna use to download our stage three. And it has the link right here. I don't know why it gives you this full HTTPS www. You don't have to do all that. Just gen2.org downloads mirrors. All right, and then we're going to scroll down to where the mirrors actually are, which is here. I'm just gonna use the first one, but you can use any of these. And then we're gonna scroll down to releases. Oh, and by the way, I'm scrolling with my arrow keys, up and down arrow key. Uh, scroll wheel does not work in links, at least not in this configuration of it. Then we're gonna scroll down to AMD64. Now, Gen 2 works on multiple platforms. Uh, the vast majority of you guys are gonna be using AMD64. There might be a couple of you out there with x86, but if that's the case, I'm going to assume that you either know what you're doing or that you just need to buy a new computer. And then same thing, if you're on any of these other you know, weird architectures, 
I'm going to assume you're more of a nerd than me and that you know what you're doing. All right, AMD 64, scroll down to auto builds, hit enter, and then we're going to choose which stage three we want to use. Now you have a number of options here. You can go with minimal, you can go with hardened, which is my favorite one. You can do no multi-lib, you can do system D, uh, you can even get into this stage four stuff, which I haven't experimented with, so I can't help you with that yet. So let's download our hardened kernel. And you want to go to the one that says .tar.xz. Hit enter on that, save, arrow down to OK. And wow, that was a really fast download. Uh, probably gonna take a couple seconds on your system, but I've got a gig up and a gig down, so I'm pretty lucky there to have fiber internet. All right, so we're gonna exit links. Okay, now, one other thing that we're going to do, or at least that I'm going to do, you don't have to do this on your system. Uh, in fact, you probably shouldn't do this on your system because the point of Gen 2 is to edit your make.conf and everything on your own. But I'm gonna download this, which is a little script that I made to uh, really deploy Gen 2. It actually automates all of these steps that I'm manually showing you guys, but since this is for educational purposes, I'm gonna do most of the steps manually. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna skip a few parts that take a long time. It's gonna be kind of like, um, you know, the Martha Stewart shows where she teaches you how to make a pie, but then the pie is already made because we don't want to just sit around with our dicks in our hands watching me configure a kernel. That would just take too damn long. So we'll download the zip, we'll save it, exit out of links again, we'll unzip this. And then that's ready for when we need it. All right, now back to the manual part. So this is, um, you know, how to verify that your stage three is legit. Uh, go ahead and do that if you're installing on hardware. But again, I'm in a virtual machine. I'm pretty sure that the Gen 2 website didn't get hacked recently. So I think we're good with not verifying the stage three. All right, so now, unpack the stage tarball. This is the command to do it. Make sure that you type that exactly the way that it is because this is not your normal stage three. This is a stage three that has, well, it's an OS that's inside of a tarball. So it's, um, it's very important that you type this so that all of the file permissions and stuff is set the way that the developer intended for it to be set instead of it getting overridden. So that's what the X adders star dot star and the numeric owner is all about. Oh, I did not type it right. Um, What did I type wrong? XPVF. Stage three, blah, 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 X, A, T, T, R, S, include, equal, start out star, numeric, oh, I spelled numeric wrong. That'll do it, numeric owner. Again, make sure you type it right. Luckily, I typed in something that was just completely invalid, but if you fuck it up in a way that is valid and unpacks it, you're gonna have to delete everything and start over. So, you know, don't do not do as I do, do as I say. <laughs> All right, so compiling, configuring the compile options. All right, so this is what I was talking about when I told you that there are going to be uh, a lot of settings that we need to put. So your make.conf, let me show you guys what a default make.conf looks like. Uh, it's an Etsy portage make.conf. So I'm going to VI into this. So this is just the default thing that you guys get. So there's some things that you would set in here, like under your C flags, or I think it's under your common flags, you would specify the actual 
CPU that you're using. Um, Gen 2 has support for many different CPU architectures to basically use specific instructions when it's doing all the compiling. So you'll see in my other one that I have it set to Haswell. Um, it's missing, but down here you can set your make ops, which is how many threads will be used when you're actually doing the compiling. Let me show you a uh, let me show you an example. I'm gonna just back up this real quick. Uh, make dir mount gen two. Let's see. Portage. We'll say defaults and then move. Let's save ourselves some typing. I'm be a little bit smart. Move. Make dot conf to mount gen two. Let's see. Portage defaults. All right, so now we're gonna show you what my modified one looks like. It's inside of here, CD kernel. Um, wait, no, it's inside of Portage. Of course it's inside of Portage. Okay, so you see this make.conf has all of those settings set that I was talking about. So we put our MArch has well. That's the architecture we're using. My make ops is of course set to J3 because we have three threads that we're gonna use for the compiling. Uh, if you did this virtual machine or if you're doing hardware and you have four threads, set it to four. If you've only got two threads, set it to two, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, use flags, it mentions that, I think it's the next thing it mentions in the, um, in the Gen2 handbook. So your use flags are basically all of these different code libraries that you want to include or exclude in your build because like I've said a couple times now, Gen2 is source-based. Every single thing that you're gonna install on this system, you're gonna be compiling locally. So I highly recommend that you exclude code libraries that you don't need. And this is just, gonna be a trial and error thing. I mean, you can copy mine if you want, if your uses are gonna be the same. Um, Cause you see like, if I'm building a big package like uh, Firefox, for example, I don't wanna waste CPU cycles with building support for KDE, building support for systemd, building support for GNOME, et cetera, et cetera. Cause when you download uh, packages, uh, like on Ubuntu or on Arch Linux, the binaries that they make are automatically compiled with support for all of this crap because they want to have a wide range of people that are able to use it. Nothing wrong with that, but the point is, if you're not gonna use all this crap, there's no reason to even build support for it into your packages. Thus, the raw power of Gentoo. So we're gonna move this to um, to where it needs to be, which is inside of mount gen2 etsy portage. So now my make.conf is in there. And this is going over all the same things that I just went over you guys with. All right, so now it's time to chur root. Uh, before I do this, actually, I wanna see if I can copy over my kernel. Uh, this is the real, <laughs> the real Martha Stewart part because this takes forever to do. Like, you can see, uh, oh, wait, I'm having a laugh. Uh, you can see that there's 4,006 lines here. So when you do your kernel, there is a whole lot of options that you can include, exclude, um, set to a non-Boolean value, so on and so forth. Um, this part alone can take you a couple of hours. I, I might do a video in the future if there's demand for it, showing you how to actually configure your kernel. 
Uh, but yeah, today we're just going to Martha Stewart it and use a pre-made kernel. <coughs> so let's copy that over to CP Gen2 hardened minimal to user source Linux. Oh, I don't think we have that already, actually. Okay, we don't have it yet. So let's just move it to um, mount Gentoo. Let's just put it inside of what is going to soon become our root directory. That way it's easy to get to. Okay, so let's set up our mirrors for our make.conf. Um, I actually don't know if this part is necessary or not since I'm using a pre-made make.conf. Um, I never really analyzed it close enough to see if it's got all of the mirrors, if it actually saves all the mirrors in there, but this part only takes a few seconds to do anyway. So I'm just gonna scroll down to the American mirrors cause you know, I'm in America. If you're somewhere else, choose the somewhere else mirrors. And I'm just gonna choose a bunch of these. Um, uh, let's see, are we doing Georgia Tech? Yeah, let's do Georgia Tech. I like Georgia Tech. All right, and University of Utah, sure, why not? So these are the mirrors that we're gonna use for downloading everything. Make dir parents. Mount, Gentoo, Etsy, Portage, repo, oop, repos.conf. All right, so we made that, and then we're gonna do this next part to copy over the repository configuration file that we just made. User, share, portage, config, repos.conf, to mount, Gentoo, Etsy, Portage, Repos.conf, Gentoo.conf. Nice long command. Now you guys see why I made a script to do all this crap. It's all right though, I love you guys. I'm gonna show you how to do it manually. Copy over the DNS info. All right, copy, CP, D-E-R-E-F-E-R-E-N-C-E. -E Etsy, resolve.conf to mount, Gentoo, Etsy. All right, and now mounting the necessary file systems. Let's see if I can actually do all of this correctly. This is usually the part where I end up making some mistakes. All right, I think that's one down. Let's see, rbind, dev, mount gen2 dev, okay. Mount, make, our slave, mount gen2 dev. All right, I think I typed everything right that time. So now we're going to enter into the new environment. So true root, mount gen2, bin bash, source, etsy, Oh shit, not not source it, source. <laughs> Etsy profile. All right, and then we are going to um, do this. Now this uh, export PS1 stuff, this isn't actually that necessary, but it's helpful because it helps you to basically realize that you're in a chur root environment. Um, all that this command is actually going to do is put this part in the curly braces. I mean, this part in the um, in the parentheses, including the parentheses. It's going to put that to the left of where it says live CD. Um, so it's just to basically differentiate your command prompt from a non chur rooted command prompt. See, that's all it really does. It's not super necessary, but 
it's a good idea to do it to keep yourself from making any mistakes. All right, so now we're gonna mount the boot partition. Now remember, we do not create unnecessary partitions. So our boot is dev SDA1 as it should be. And then we're going to configure portage. So what we're gonna do, uh, emerge webr sync is just syncing basically Gentoo's repository with the latest thing that they have on their server. Um, this part I don't really think is super necessary either. Um, I haven't tried to do a Gentoo install without doing it, but I believe if you're using a newer stage three, like I'm using one from two days ago, that this doesn't end up being necessary. And yeah, you see it's it barely received anything. Like there's there's not much that's actually different from two days ago and today. All right, and then this is the same thing. If you wanna have it more up to date, cause WebRSync, I believe, has a snapshot done every day or every 48 hours. If you wanna have it sync to like the last minute, then go ahead and do that emerge sync. All right, reading news items. We're not gonna do that. Choosing the right profile. So this is another thing that isn't really necessary because whichever one you choose is gonna automatically select that profile. So unless you want to use a different profile than what you're doing on your stage three, you don't actually need to do this part because you can see it's already set for you. Yeah, we're not gonna do no multi-lib, we're not gonna do system D, we're not gonna do any of that. Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to do this emerge command, which is going to take a couple of minutes. So if you guys want to enter this command and then pause the video, you can. Uh, so the command on the um, on the Gentoo website is this, but you can actually type a much shorter version of this. I don't I don't know why they list these super verbose comments like this, but here's a much shorter way to do it. Emerge A for ask, V for verbose, U for update, D for deep, and N for new use, and then at the world. And you'll see that this will do the same exact thing that it would have done if we actually typed out that whole long verbose command. Type in yes, and then, like I said, this will take a couple of minutes. Um, it'll take even longer if you set your make ops lower than mine, so feel free to take a break at this time, go get a coffee, whatever you need to do.
All right, so our emerge is finished. It didn't take too, too long. Like I said, the more make ops that you add, the faster this stuff will go. As long as you don't go over your core count. If you go way over your core count, then it's gonna crash because it's trying to use all these cores that it doesn't actually have. All right, so optional, configuring the accept license use variable. By default, it's free. And that's the same thing I wanna use. Um, I guess you could change it to be like FSF approved if you wanted to go there, but I think some of my programs that I use on a daily basis are not approved by the Free Software Foundation, so yeah, fuck them. I'm not gonna go through all of that work just to appease some people. Free's good enough for me. All right, we're not gonna use system D as the init system. Let's get our time zone set. Okay, so we're going to Echo, America, New York, to Etsy, time zone. So this will put me on, um, what is it, Eastern Standard Time. If you're in a different time zone, then just put in uh, something else. Like I think you do like America, Los Angeles, if you're on Pacific time. Really any major city should work because there's multiple options for each time zone. All right, then let's actually apply this time zone. Config syslibs time zone data. All right, and then we get to configure our locales. And this is one of the things that's really annoying to me about Gen 2 is that for some reason when you're in the chur root environment, you can't do VI, you can't do Vim, you're stuck with Nano. And Gen 2 devs, if you can do something about that, please do it. It's so annoying that, because you have VI, like I think I showed you guys earlier, it's there in the system, it's just not there once you change root. No idea why. All right, so we're going to set this one, UTF-8. And then we do locale gen to apply it. And E select locale list. We want to now, I don't know which one it's actually using right now, so we'll just e-select locale set four. That way we know it's gonna be using the right one. And now we do an environment update. env update and source etsy profile export ps1 equals Chur root or whatever name you ended up using. PS1, bam. All right, so our locale is regenerated. Now to install the kernel sources. So we're gonna follow this prompt, but then, like I said, we're gonna get all Martha Stewart pretty soon. This is only emerging four things, so this shouldn't take too long. It should only be maybe a minute.
All right, so we got that done. Now, let's let's Martha Stewart this a little bit. So let me just show you guys what I mean. Um, actually, there's one more package that we have to uh, that we have to do. Um, let's hmm. CP Gen two hard and minimal to user source Linux. Okay. And then let's do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to reuse that pre-made kernel because if you're following the Gen 2 documentation, this is what you would normally do you would cd into the Linux source, and then you would do a make menu config. And when you do that, it brings up a menu, sort of like uh, like DOS style. I think it uses end curses. Um, but if you think of like an old school DOS style menu, that's basically what it brings up, where you go and you choose all of your different kernel options. Now, I'm not gonna do that, because this video is already 40 minutes long. And if I recorded myself actually setting all of those options in my kernel, this video would probably end up being three hours long, no exaggeration. There's a lot of settings. There's, I think, over 4,000 settings that you can do inside of the kernel. So we have it copied over. Um, the process for using the pre-made kernel is slightly different than the process for using a, uh, a kernel that you generate yourself. I'm going to just check this script real quick because I already scripted out all of the instructions to do it. So I'm just going to see what they are and then type it manually for you guys. All right, so... I have to, of course, rename this to config and then make old config. And then after that, it looks like everything's the same. Oh, actually, I think I need to do these guys as well. Yeah, I need to emerge LZOP and that arch. Okay, so let's emerge LZOP and app arch lz4 lz4 i should be able to do both of these in one line and i think the reason that i need to do that is this kernel that i'm using i believe it's slightly older or actually no 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 the uh the lzop is a compression thing yeah, because that's the type of compression that I decided to use on my kernel configuration just to make it a little bit more minimal, a little bit more lightweight. Um, I forget what that other utility is for, but it's in my script. I know that the script works at least halfway decently. Again, if you guys want to try using that script to set it up, do so at your, at your own will. It's not done yet. <laughs> I don't even have a readme for how to do it, but it's pretty much just um, you run the one that's called uh, setup gen2, and then you have to manually change root. I haven't been able to figure out how to script that in a way that works. So you enter a couple commands manually, and then you run the post chur root script, and then that essentially does all of this stuff that it's doing here for you. And I'm probably going to cut this video off after I start making the kernel because the kernel takes a little while to make. Um, yeah, I'm just going to show you guys the commands up to that part and I'll go ahead and split this off into a part two because we're already at the 43 minute mark. And I want to make this kind of, well, I don't want to record half an hour of make operations being run. It's already bad enough with, with what I have, but I'm going to comment some 
uh, I guess, tags for the video where you could just fast forward ahead past these parts. But it's it's really just a waste of video for me to record everything with the kernel installing.
All right, so we got those packages emerged. And let's see, did I already emerge the, the PCI utils? Did I do that? Kernel Gen 2 sources. No, I did not do that already. All right, let's emerge this as well. This one uh, doesn't take as long, I promise. So once that's done, then we can finally make our kernel. And that'll be the end, at least of this video. Wait for the part two. So we go back to CD user source Linux, make old config. Actually, hang on. Let me make sure I'm not having a laugh. I am having a laugh. I am having a laugh. Let's see, is there already a kernel config? No. So we need to move this so that this becomes our new kernel config. Then we make old config. And we'll do, yeah, sure, we'll do one. Okay, and yeah, you can see that's all of the of the old configs. And then we are going to make and make modules install. All right, so I believe this is the command that is gonna end up taking a lot of time to run. Like on my system with MakeOps 3, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes. And I'm not gonna bore you guys with half the video being just watching MakeOps scroll through in a terminal. So I'm gonna cut the video off here. We're gonna have a part two. Make sure you like this video, share it, subscribe. Peace out, guys.